Hey guys, welcome back. I was planning to do a video this week where we build a new, more advanced gameplay ability called Lightning Storm. This ability will create a storm in front of us, trace for targets, and then split a fixed amount of damage across them by doing randomly timed lightning strikes. In the first version, we'll use gameplay cues, but in the second version, I'll show you an advanced technique to sync random number generation between server and clients to reduce network replication of the gameplay cues. But then Unreal Engine 5.3 came out and I had to work on updating ODBS to work with it. I didn't get the new ability finished, and so now you get this video instead. Let's take a look at a few of the new features in 5.3 that we may use in the Hubworld MMO example project. Nanite Explicit Tangents. This one's interesting. If you've ever looked at Nanite up close, you'll notice that all the tangents look a bit weird. And if you play around with it, you'll notice that Nanite only really works well on dense objects. If you try to use Nanite on like a low poly mesh, it looks horrific. And that's because of the tangents. But they've now actually made a way for low poly meshes where you can keep the tangents uh, from the original mesh. And so that that's pretty exciting um, for making sure that you can keep all of the objects in your world uh, nanite rather than having to uh, to mix them. So pretty cool thing there. They claim that mask foliage now has a 20% performance improvement. Now the Hubworld MMO example project, you know, we've got an ice world, not really sure where foliage is gonna work uh, up top, but, but I am planning on an underground cave system. And what I'm thinking is we've got underground forests. So um, we will eventually make use of some foliage and that 20% improvement is really gonna help us. Virtual shadow maps, VSM, uh, which is required for Nanite uh, in Lumen is also production ready. And it has, as I showed in my video for 5.3 uh, preview one, uh, it now has the ability to fully control whether the VSM cache is invalidated um, based on each individual foliage actor, we can control those individually. And so we get a lot more control on that. And that is really great. No need to use my uh, foliage shadow imposter, uh, foliage shadow proxy plugin anymore. So that is now, now covered. And that's great to see that that's production ready. Nanite landscape. You know, I didn't have much luck with this one. In 5.3 preview one, which is why I didn't make a video, I'm hoping that 5.3 release uh, works better and doesn't have nearly the kind of crashes I was running into uh, and hopefully better performance because I was not happy with the performance at all. Um, so we'll give that a try. If that works well, uh, we'll probably convert our hub world MMO example map to Nanite landscape. Landscape LOD groups. So this one's actually, I think, gives us a lot more flexibility in designing our world. People, you know, often ask me like, hey, I want a, you know, a eight kilometer map, or I want a 16 kilometer map, or I want a 20 kilometer map. And currently there's some issues uh, around large maps. The biggest one we have is with the water system, doesn't like to work on maps over four kilometers. But, but with landscape LOD groups, what we could do is we could actually build a world with four kilometer separate landscapes, right? And they don't necessarily have to be adjacent to each other, right? They could be connected through other systems, right? That were not, you know, completely where you could go every direction. Like maybe there's a, a canyon that's connecting it. You can't go over the canyon walls. Maybe there's tunnels collect, connecting them. Maybe there's waterways connecting them. And by doing that, you could potentially uh, use four kilometer landscapes, right? And, and not have to deal with anything larger, which means the water system would work great. And what landscape LOD groups for us can do is make sure that they the separate landscapes LOD together, right? So that they'll mat, they'll mesh up nicely and match. So that that's a pretty cool thing. We'll probably look into that in the future. I think I think we only using a two kilometer map on the Hubworld MO example project, but I'd have to double check. Um, but we could potentially create more two kilometer maps and somehow connect them, maybe with our underground tunnel system. Procedural content generation. Uh, this one's huge. Uh, we are going to use it uh, to populate our map. 
Um, we just have to get to that point. I'm kind of focusing on gameplay because I really want to get to the point where we can do a uh, test. So one of the things, if you haven't heard this already from Discord, one of the things that I want to do with the Hub World MMO Example Project is I want to get some hard data for how many players can we get on a server. And so we're going to do two tests, right? Once we get some gameplay that's, you know, similar to what we'll end up with, right? So we have good good system to test with. We're going to do a play test. And I hope, I hope that all of you here on YouTube will come help me and we can get, you know, 100 plus people to try this out. And we're going to see how many players we can get on a server and still have combat function without lag so we'll we'll come up with some kind of system or maybe we'll add people in groups of 10 and then maybe we'll go down to groups of five and then as it seems to start getting to the point where it's really really struggling maybe we'll add one at a time and see what we can we can do kind of all fighting in the same area to create a worst case scenario and we'll get some hard data on that and that's going to be with a mostly unoptimized obviously i've been doing some optimizations but i'm mostly unoptimized and then what i'm going to do is I'm going to go back and we're going to optimize this like crazy. We're going to do every single thing we can do to try to reduce that network replication and get as many players as we can and see how much better we can make it. And of course, I'll share all the server data. I'll be monitoring everything, recording everything, and I'll I'll do multiple videos sharing all the server data, showing, you know, memory usage, CPU usage, you know, what size servers are we using? And, uh, and we can get some good data because one of the questions that I almost always get asked is, how many players can I get on a server? And I usually have to reply and say, well, you know, it depends on your game. But at least once we do this, we'll have a better idea of, hey, with this game done this way, as the Hub World MMO example project, which everyone can go and view the source code on that, here's what you can expect to get. So um, I really do want to do that. Uh, but once, once we get that, you know, data, then we can continue with creating out our world more and adding additional features um, that, that make the world come alive. And procedural content generation is going to be great for that. I'm still going through the source code on that to go through each node in procedural content generation. I'm making notes, and eventually I will do a video on that. It might not be connected to World MMO. It may just be a, a separate guide on uh, procedural content generation since it may be a while till we get to that in the Hope World MMO example project. This last one here I just thought's really cool. Um, skeletal editor. It's experimental with skin weight editing. Epic is moving more and more of content generation from something like Maya or Blender into Unreal Engine. It's exciting to see. Even if you do use Blender or Maya as your original content creation, the ability to quickly make an edit to something right in Unreal Engine without having to go back and then bring it back through the pipeline is really exciting. The ODBS plugin has been updated to 5.3 on GitHub. I wanted to let you know that the ODBS replication graph has been removed. Um, in Unreal Engine 5, it's not removed, but it's deprecated. Um, I'm a little upset about this. I really like the ODBS replication, or the just replication graph in general. Not the, the ODBS one was just an example. But I really like the replication graph. It's super powerful. But I think that they are deprecating it because it, it took special kinds of network programmers to work on this, and it was not simple to use. So they have a new system called Iris, and we will be using that in the future, but probably not for the first playtest. That's going to be part of the network optimization between the first and second playtest. The only downside to Iris, not a downside to me, but it may be a downside to some people, is that it only runs on a source-built engine. So not just only packages on a source-built engine, like we currently have, it only runs on it. So once I enable Iris on the Hubble MMO Example Project, everyone who uses the Hubble MMO Example Project will have to upgrade to a custom uh, Unreal Engine source-built engine. So that is, that is one of the downsides to it. Um, but I think by looking through Iris, it appears that what they're trying to do is they're trying to take a lot of the concepts from the replication graph but put them into a system that more people can figure out, right? The replication graph, I think, was considered too complicated. It took specialized programmers. And now in Iris, if you look at what they're doing, you know, it, it's a lot simpler. I do worry that it's not nearly as powerful. I like to have that power of the replication graph, and it looks like Iris doesn't really have it. Um, but it's probably going to bring a lot of the improvements, uh, you know, to the masses. So that is that is cool to see.
I also removed the ODBS task root motion constant force. I don't think this one should have ever been there. It didn't look like there were any modifications in it compared to the original. I think I had just made a copy of it because I wanted to look through the source code and try modifying a few things. Um, anyway, this time around, it had conflicts. Uh, there were C++ errors in it. My guess is the original changed. I could have gone and copied the original back over it. Hopefully no one was using this. Um, if you were, jump in Discord and we'll, we'll talk about how we can how we can fix that for you. The ODBS starter project has been updated and the link there is at openworldserver.com. The Hubworld demo example project has not been updated to 5.3. I'm still working on it. Uh, hopefully I have it done sometime this weekend. Watch the Discord for updates. If you have any questions related to this video, please leave your questions in the comments section. The Open World Server and Hubworld MMO Discord link is in the video description if you want to discuss something in this video further. Like and subscribe to be notified of future videos and to help with the algorithm. Until next time, have a good one.